Welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol unboxing. So maybe a little bit addicted to this game. There's several <laughs> unboxing videos if you want to check out our back catalogue. But today it's X23 and Honey Badger. So check them out. And as always, on the back there is a little bit of a blurb. So Laura Kinney. X-23 is the 23rd attempt by the Weapon X program and there was a doctor or geneticist um, called Sarah Kinney who tried to make a, a clone from Wolverine. Um, that has been tried quite a few times in the past but she used her own DNA this time um, and made Kinney using her own genetic material with Wolverines and she technically became a surrogate mother for Laura Kinney which is X-23 um, but this girl is not really a girl she is a weapon she never really got to live her childhood uh, she was basically going to be used as a weapon and by that she was actually quite feral and quite savage have you seen the Logan film? That's very much like uh, Laura Kinney before she uh, found Wolverine and the Xavier Institute. And speaking of Xavier Institute, she did become one of the X-Men. Uh, which she started to get a bit more of her humanity back, uh, hanging around with other kids. But she was still never fully like a child. She always had that wild streak in her very much like Wolverine and uh, she took it on herself to try taking out all the other clones that were used as weapons until she got to the youngest clone which she took under her wing and that's Gabby so that's Honey Badger so Honey Badger is a little bit different from X-23 and Wolverine for she still has bone uh, claws so X-23 um, has two claws, whereas Wolverine has three claws, and Honey Badger only has the one claw. And this tiny feral child, um, she unfortunately has been through a lot, and right, her uh, pain receptors aren't quite so responsive, so she can take a lot more damage uh, before succumbing to her injuries. Um, she just gets angry and doesn't feel so much pain. Uh, due to a nanite in her body, but the bad news is it does shorten her lifespan. So Wolverine could potentially live for a very, 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 very long time, whereas Honey Badger, not entirely sure how long she's going to live. So I have to admit, I didn't really hear about Honey Badger until probably about a year or maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, X-23 has been on my radar for a very, very long time. I didn't realise because I didn't actually read any of her comics, I just knew of her from computer games and things like that, that she actually kept one of the clones that she was hunting down and killing and called her a sister. So that's just a, a brief background into these two characters. Next, we'll get into the rules. So let's start with X-23. So real name, Laura Kinney. Uh, five health, so five stamina. Medium movement. Size 2 and cost 3 to have on your team. Her defense is 3 physical, 3 energy, and 2 mystic. She has Alamantium Slash, so not too dissimilar from Wolverine. Range 2, 5 strength, 0 cost. After this attack is resolved, this character gains energy equal to the amount of damage dealt. She has Bleed and Pierce on a Wild, which means if you roll 1 Wild, both effects happen. So bleed is a condition at the end of the model who's suffering from bleed uh, finishes their activation. They also suffer one damage. And pierce, pierce changes one of their um, defense results. So shield, wild, or crit to a blank, which is pretty nice. She also has claw rush. So claw rush is a range three. It's six strength, cost two, 
after his attack is resolved, this character may advance medium. There's also a pierce on that as well, so if you get a wild, pierce is a thing. So, first lot of powers. Frenzy. Cost 2 energy. If this character dazes or KOs an enemy character with an attack during its activation, this character may use this superpower. After attack is resolved, this character advances small and makes an adamantium slash attack. This superpower can only be used once per turn. So you do I don't know, your first attack, you manage to kill somebody. Um, looking at you, Brett, with your massive crazy dice in our last tournament. Uh, X23 took out eight points of models um, in the first turn, dazing them and then flipping it and then, yeah, KOing them, making it look easy. And um, yeah, then moves and then can smack somebody else. And then, of course, you then can do another attack if you wanted to, which is pretty good. So, X23, as long as you don't one shot her, she's going to be around for a while. So, five health. If someone does five damage. She is fair enough out of the equation, but it's not as easy as that. We'll get into this in a second. Adamantium Skeleton. When determining if this character can be thrown by an effect or a special rule, or is colliding with another character or a train feature, this character counts as size 3. So like Wolverine, having the Adamantium Skeleton does make her heavier. Uh, don't ever tell a woman that she's heavier, especially if she has knives coming out of her fists. Um, assassin training. So this is what I was talking about a second ago. Five health. Her stats don't look amazing, but this character may reroll one die in attack or defense rolls. It's pretty damn good. So it makes her, in my opinion, as good if not better than Wolverine because she's slightly more accurate. Uh, and with a defense roll, that's pretty nice. I mean, yes, she's let's say she's going to have three physical defense. Not great, but gets to reroll that. So her weakness is definitely getting shot before she gets into combat. So her being potentially X-Men or X-Force is really, really good. So X-Men with Storm would be great. Getting cover from a distance and re-rolling a dice. It's pretty nice. Keeps her a bit safer. Or if you're an X-Force, you get to re-roll one attack dice, which is fantastic. Because she's rolling five dice with her basic. And you get then... Technically, get to roll two dice, re roll two dice, which is brilliant. Why not? So, she can either be more of a murder machine or she can be more survivable. Because the second um, she activates, um, she's basically laughing to herself because at the end of that, she gets to heal two with her healing factor anyway, which is just down there. Um, but with Big Sis, if an allied Gabriella Kinney is within, that's Honey Badger for those who don't know, haven't got to that bit yet, is within range 3 of this character and is damaged by an enemy effect. After the effect is resolved, this character may advance medium towards the character that damaged. That's pretty good. So she moves medium anyway. Yes, she's on a tiny base. Um, this character may only move once per turn as a result of this superpower, which is just as well. So she could... Uh, move, attack, kill someone, move small, and attack again. Or she can move because Honey Badger is taking some damage. Yeah, they work pretty damn well together, as you can imagine. So, um, Healing Factor 2 is always nice. On the injured side, she goes from 5 health to a big old 5 health. Exactly the same. So there's not much damage, uh, a difference on the back. Uh, it's pretty much the same. I don't see anything different there. Not like Wolverine, she can still hold objectives. So this is why I think she's better than Wolverine. because She's one point cheaper and she can hold objectives. Now Honey Badger is a different beast altogether. So Honey Badger, I've always known as Gabriella Kinney. She is five health, medium move, size 2, and she only cost 2. So her defense is 3 physical, 2 energy, 2 mystic. So she's got slightly worse off defense on the main stat. 
She has claw slash. So also it's range two, five dice, zero. And it does have a bleed, but it doesn't have a crit, uh, sorry, a uh, wild pierce. So still bleed, still not bad. She's still gonna do some work, I think. And she gains energy for the amount of damage dealt, which is pretty straightforward, pretty standard. She also has hamstring range two, five dice, three energy to perform this. If this attack deals damage after attack is resolved, the target character gains the slow and bleed special condition, which is pretty nice. So slow, as you can imagine, only allows you to make a slow move. And bleed, well we've spoken about uh, bleed a minute ago. But if she gets a wild, she has elusive. After this attack is resolved, this character may advance medium. So another lot of movement tricks. So you can imagine them in X-Men Gold, Understorm, um, one of these guys can leap forward with the Leapfrog special ability, a model within range two, you can move within one of them. So what you want is a nice big base like Cable, and they really can leap forward. So they do have some movement tech. And then we have Too Dangerous to Ignore, which is the beginning part of our superpowers. It does cost two. When an enemy character within range two of this character targets another allied character with an attack, this character may use this superpower. This character becomes the target of the attack regardless of range and line of sight. So it is a bodyguard. I mean, she may not survive getting smacked. She's not as tough as, uh, let's say, Luke Cage. He's a pretty damn good bodyguard, or even Cap. But she is too dangerous to ignore, apparently. Next, we have Ankle Biter. So this is a passive. This character cannot contest, interact, or hold objective tokens. Additionally, when an enemy character within one of this character is attacked by another allied character, the enemy character rolls one less defense dice, which is pretty nice. So let's say you're using X-Force again, and you've got Cable, and he's throwing Incinerate out there. That, on top of Incinerate, is pretty nice. But remember, you cannot reduce someone's defense less than one. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So it's like a, an auto Incinerate. But it's got to be within one. Uh, so little sis. If an allied Laura Kinney is within three of this character and is damaged by an enemy effect after the effect is resolved, this character may advance medium towards the character that damaged Laura Kinney. It's going to be used once per turn, which is nice. So either one gets damaged, and they're within three of the other one. The other one will move medium. It's pretty good. So it's a nice tag team. So if you pick on one, move the other one up, and you decided, oh, crumbs are going to pick on the other one, and moves the other one up. Yeah, that's not good. So if you're worried about that, maybe push them away from three inches from each other. She does have a healing factor of one. So if she is kind of survivable, it's still not bad. So once again, if you don't one-shot her at the end of her activation, she is going to heal one. On her injured side, however, she has one less health. So she is a whole health stamina of four. But the rest of her card is exactly the same. So nothing different there. So this box comes with two Team Tactics cards, one of which is Wolverines. So unaffiliated, active, James Logan Howlett and Laura Kinney may spend three energy each to play this card. While <laughs> James Logan Howlett, Wolverine, and Laura Kinney, X-23, are within two of each other. They cannot be pushed or thrown by enemy effects. Uh, they may, may re-roll any number of attack dice, and after an attack targeted either one of them is resolved, the attacking character suffers one damage. If it did not daze or KO the target character, um, which is pretty nice, uh, this effect lasts until the end of the round. So if you're going to hit them, uh, make sure you daze or KO them, or you're going to suffer one damage, which is pretty nice, and they cannot be moved. And they get to re-roll. That's pretty damn cool. I do like that card. 
Um, I mean, yes, Wolverine doesn't hold objectives on the injured side, but I still like the guy. Um, I just wish he had a bit more movement tech, um, like uh, X-23. But he's not bad. I still like him. He's still the best at what he does. I still think he's such a good model. And I've modelled mine on top of a dead Deadpool. Not technically dead, I suppose. Just on top of a, a Deadpool. So this second card is pretty funny. Jonathan the Unstoppable. Unaffiliated, active. Honey Badger may spend two to play this card. Place a Jonathan token within one of this character. While this Jonathan token is in play, it contests objectives as if it was a injured allied character. So obviously if there's a healthy one nearby, not so good. Uh, if an enemy character enters movement within one of this token, remove it from the battlefield. So if there's no one around, you can plonk this guy on an objective and it's brilliant. Uh, might score you a few points in the game. Uh, during the cleanup phase, if an allied honey badger is on the battlefield and there is no allied Jonathan tokens on the battlefield, you may return this card to your available team tactics cards. So this card may be played again in the game. It's pretty cool. And if you're wondering, Jonathan looks like this. Yeah, Jonathan is a honey badger. Um, so X-Force tokens, no X-Men tokens, Brotherhood tokens. Now that I'm aware of, they're not either one of them is affiliated with the Brotherhood. But still, it's definitely Brotherhood. What's going on there, kids? What's going on there? So with the instructions like most of the recent ones, um, you have to go on the website or use the QR code to get the instructions. Um, and here are the models themselves. So Standard bases, and don't forget you've got cups, crush cans, so don't chuck those away. And two tiny sprues. So this is X23. Look at her claws. Pretty savage. So she is uh, leaping off of tactical rock. So you can see the tactical rock there. With her hair whipping behind her in the breeze. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of detail. Oh, there is. There is. The face looks better than like the the first lot of models they released. It's looking pretty savage there. And then we have Honey Badger. So Honey Badger with her single claw, which is so tiny. And she has two faces just in case you lose one. So they are quite small models for regular old humanoid scale. But yeah, really looking forward to uh, playing these guys. I'm not sure how much I will play Honey Badger because I know that she gives bonuses to um, X-23. But um, I, I think I prefer her pose out of the two. Because that one there looks like she's... Um, sprinting a marathon and nearly falling on her face. So I know um, Ina Henderson, the uh, the Hendy Badger, not the Honey Badger, he has repositioned her into a more believable pose. Um, but yeah, I think I might give a small conversion a go because she does look like she's going to fall on her face. Well, she's got healing factor. She'll be fine, right? Right. Hopefully we'll see these on a battle report soon. So, thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you liked this video, please smash that like button if you do, and subscribe for some more great hobby content. See you in the next video guys!